Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about macadamia tree growing. If you're in a subtropical climate, the macadamia tree is a must grow tree. It's a fun tree to grow. It gives you one of the most expensive nuts in the world. And I'll tell you, they're delicious and they're really not that difficult to grow. But there is one mistake that people make about the way they fertilize the tree. And I want you to not make that mistake. So stay with us, don't go away. We'll be right back. All right, so this tree is a variety called Arkin. This is Arkin Carambola. Arkin is a very well-known variety uh, in South Florida because uh, back in the, in the 60s and 70s, it was very popular. The Arkin paper shell, that's what it's called. It was developed by a gentleman named Arkin, okay, here in South Florida, and he developed it so that it would produce well here in South Florida, but also a pretty good quantity of fruit nothing like a commercial scale but a good quantity of fruit for a homeowner and then the other nice thing about it was that it was pretty easy to crack okay it was had a tiny little hairline crack in it very very thin so it was called paper shell and that would make it really easy to to crack them open and and, and utilize those uh those macadamia so that's one of the big uh claim to fame okay for the arkin that's a-r-k-i-n great 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 macadamia for south florida so you can grow these trees in many different ways. What you're looking at here, here, and here, and here, and behind it, those are called air layers. And that's one way to propagate a tree quickly and have a nice root system develop. And then you have a tree that's an exact clone of its mother. So we have the potential here to grow one, two, three, four more Arkin. And I say potential because sometimes these air layers could fail. And I have a couple of videos about air layering trees and I'll put a link above here so you guys can look at that and learn exactly what this is all about. It's called air layering a tree. It's a great thing to try if you've never tried it. And if you're not that familiar or you've tried it and you haven't had luck with it, you really should watch that video. Again, the link is gonna be right above my head here so you guys can check it out. Um, with respect to these trees, again, they're subtropical trees. They're really not difficult to grow, but there's one thing that people always kind of have a big issue with and that's what we're going to focus on today but we're also going to focus a little bit as I said earlier on how to propagate so one way to propagate is to do air layers and another way to propagate is to do cuttings so this tree I purchased it about two and a half years ago online and I got it as a cutting and I got it from a very reputable grower so I know that what I was getting was a real cutting and not a seed grown tree that's important because you want something that's a clone if it's a clone, it's the same as its mother and father, okay? It's the same tree, same variety. So it's an Arkin, and I can also identify this tree as Arkin by some of the characteristics. For example, the Arkin has a very tiny little sharp needle at the tip, and it has one or two small little sharp needles around the back in most cases. Most other uh, macadamias have all kinds of little spines all around it, everywhere. But the Arkin has that interesting spike right here, and the little devil that gets me in the back sometimes back here, you, you get caught back here. So this is a great variety called Arkin. Now, let's talk a little bit about what a cutting is. All right, so on my right here, this is a seedling tree. This was grown from a seed, and you can see what I was talking about earlier. If I run my hand down here, I can feel all of those little spines all along the edges. So this is this is sharp, okay? So if you grow a seedling tree, it's not a big deal. It's just gonna take you maybe eight or 10 years before you actually get any uh, macadamias. Uh, so that's probably not something you wanna do. But if you wanna graft, which we're not gonna actually show you anything about grafting today or even discuss it too much, but grafting is another way of cloning a tree and that we could do. So you do oftentimes need to grow lots of seedlings so that then you can take the seedlings and you can take the wood or scion from the mother macadamia, a productive tree, and graft it onto here. And in the future, we'll show you how we do that because we're going to be moving in that direction. But for now, we're growing these from cuttings and we're also growing them from air layers. And we're growing them from seeds because that way we have more rootstock for the future of the propagation by grafting, okay? So there's a seedling, this is about a year old seedling, okay? Now, I had mentioned that there's one thing that's really important and it has to do with nutrition, 
And don't go away because that's something you must know if you're going to grow macadamias. It's very, very important that you know this. And we're going to allude to it in just a minute. You know what nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is, okay? That's NPK. Well, one of those can be really, really dangerous to your tree. And that's what we're going to get to. But let me show you a cutting, okay? So this tree, this tree is a little cutting. And if I told you this took literally almost nine months, and again, we started this in the winter, so theoretically it might take six months in the future, but eight to nine months for a cutting to develop enough roots so that then we get to this stage. So that's a long time to wait, but that's the time it took to get it to this size. In about two years, this will be, if I take good care of it, It'll be as big as the tree I showed you earlier that was behind me. So that was grown from a cutting, which means it's a clone. And this is another Arkin. So yes, we can grow from the cuttings. We can grow from a seed. This is what the seed looks like. Okay, a macadamia. You can crack that open and you've got your macadamia nut inside that you can eat. Okay. One part of the nutrition that you really need to, to be concerned with. And that's the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So the issue is going to be with the phosphorus. Not with the nitrogen and not with the potassium, okay? You need potassium, you need nitrogen, and you do need phosphorus, but there's one caveat about the phosphorus that we're gonna really focus on in just a moment. Now getting back to the flowers, this is an air layer right here. This is an air layer, this is just like the tree that was behind me, that's from one of my other trees on the property, and that is the Arkin, okay? So again, I have that small little sharp needle on the tip, and I also have a tree that's flowering already. Why? Because I got a tree from a good grower that I trusted that sold me a cutting that rooted of an Arkin. I have an Arkin, and it's already flowering from such a small tree like this. So this was an air layer, and again, I have a video it talks about lychee air layer, but it's the same philosophy, it's the same process. Watch the video on air layering the lychee tree. I'll put a link above here, or I'll put a description somewhere where you can get to that link. Air layering a lychee tree, or cloning a lychee tree on my channel. Make sure you check that out, all right? Now, the tree is flowering. It's a very small tree. I don't want it to actually produce any nuts, because if I force this tree, or if I allow this tree to try to produce nuts, it's such a young tree, there's a good chance I'm just going to kill it. And I'm stressing it out because what I'm doing is, is I'm letting it produce flowers at a very young age. I'm letting it produce a lot of energy, or I'm, I should say I'm letting it put a lot of energy into producing a bunch of macadamias that it may not even hold on to. So why stress out the tree? Let's get some growth on the tree. Now let me get back to one of the things that I keep alluding to that you really, really need to know about, and that's going to be the phosphorus. Very important for you to understand the phosphorus, but it's also very important for you to understand a little bit about the pH of the soil. And we're going to talk about that right now. Don't go away. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and maybe you want to subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate let's get that. To the, uh, let's get to the most important part of the nutrition, okay? So all of your trees need nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, okay? The phosphorus, the P, the N, the P, the K, the P is the phosphorus. Macadamia trees are very very efficient at absorbing at absorbing phosphorus from the soil they don't really need a lot of phosphorus very little phosphorus if you fertilize your trees and you're giving them an excessive quantity of phosphorus you're going to really really hurt your trees um, so the best practice with growing your macadamia is to limit the quantity of the phosphorus if you do that it's hard to fail honestly it really is so if you're growing a young tree, use an 18, 6, 8, because there's lots of nitrogen. That's the first number. The phosphorus is a 6, and the 8 is the potassium. But potassium is important, but it doesn't need that much. So 18, 6, 8 works great, okay? As the tree gets older, okay, you want to produce more flowering, and you want to get fruit. If you give it too much nitrogen, if that 18 continues to be given to the tree, you're going to get a very big tree, and the chances of fruiting are going to be diminished so it have less fruit because that nitrogen actually inhibits the fruiting ability of the tree so you want to use something less so you might want to go with something like a, maybe a 10 a 6 an 8 a 666 or something like that okay 
A 666 is nice and balanced fertilizer. You could probably do that or any other combination that has the amount of nitrogen you feel is necessary. But just remember the phosphorus is very, very important to limit that, okay? The roots are so efficient that they take up so much that it actually hurts the tree. It doesn't need all that phosphorus. The other thing that's important is the pH of the soil. You want your trees to have a pH somewhere no higher than a 6.5. So okay. I like to amend a lot of compost and I like to sometimes use a little bit of um, an organic uh, fertilizer like a cottonseed meal, maybe incorporate a little bit of sulfur into the soil. Those are some of the things that help to lower the pH. But at 6.5, my trees are in containers and they're doing very, very well. And I'll have to worry more about the pH once I put them in the ground. So remember, the phosphorus is your enemy. You want to minimize the amount of phosphorus that you give your macadamia tree. The other thing that is really important is that three or four times a year that you give your tree some liquid iron. Liquid iron, and there's another product that's really important, or I should say another mineral, which is zinc. So something like a Liquinox. Liquinox. Liquinox is something like this, right? They, they sell it in a gallon bottle. They sell it in quartz. Liquinox, this, this bottle's been beat up. And I've had this for over a year, and I've only used, well, it's about, it's about a quarter of the way. So three quarters have already been used. And uh, the Liquinox is approximately so two to four tablespoons per gallon of water. And this I use three or four times a year. It keeps the tree nice and green. And I'm gonna focus in on some of the leaves in just a minute, so you can see how beautiful and healthy the leaves look. And I said, as I said, I've used this three or four times a year. And believe me, when I don't use this, the trees look really, really poor. They don't look so good. And if I overdo it for whatever reason with the phosphorus, my trees look even worse. So if you want a beautiful tree, low phosphorus, very low, like I have recommended, and make sure you're using something like a Liquinox, or at a minimum, the Liquinox, remember, the Liquinox has zinc. So it's liquid, iron, and zinc, Liquinox. But if you don't want to use this because whatever reason, uh, you can't find it, you can't get it, and you just want to use iron, you could use iron, just follow the directions and do it about three or four times a year. You'll see a huge difference in how well your macadamia tree responds. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, I would love to know what you think about the video. Now, uh, let me get a close up of what the macadamia tree uh, leaves look like above the air layer for you. Things going on. So your pH 6.5 at, at a maximum use the Liquinox or use the um, liquid iron and you'll be in good shape and watch the phosphorus.